Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. Today's episode is going to be part two of employees. In our last episode, we talked about the fact that you need to understand the different type of employees that you might have in your business. We also discussed the fact that it's going to take a financial hit to your business. And for some of you, employees are going to be a necessary evil. And for some of you, it's going to be by choice. So it's about making sure that you're making the right decisions about hiring employees. So make sure you check out that one. Now, in this particular one, I just want to take a little bit of time that if you have to hire employees, there's some key things I want you to keep in mind. I have hired thousands and thousands of people over the years, and I am not exaggerating. I hate hiring. But I also know it is one of the most important things you could possibly do in your business. Hiring the right people is crucial, but it's also just as crucial as to what happens to them after you put them in your business. And I have learned the hard way in my early days that I needed to take this process really seriously, no matter how painful that it could be. And here's why it's painful. I love getting a great employee. And I love training them, developing them and seeing where they come from. That's not the painful part. The painful part is the initial piece of hiring them because you have to look at a lot of people to get the right person for your business and, you know, kiss a lot of frogs, if you will, till you find that prince. And a problem is I've watched a, in the beginning, I watched a lot of people higher by fogging up the mirror, that they were so desperate for people that if the person had a pulse and could fog up the mirror, they hired them. And they got exactly what they were searching for, a body. They didn't get a great employee. They didn't get somebody that was going to make a difference in their business. And guess what? They were going to lose that person within a few months and they're going to start the process all over again. But because I really wanted the right people and I hated hiring so much. I was like going to invest all that time and energy to find the right person and then make sure that they were successful because I didn't want to go through that process again. And I also used to be measured on my turnover, which is the rate that you turn over employees. And I always wanted to have that number be as low as possible. And here's why. Because when you don't have high turnover and you have people that want to be there and they care, you have a much better business. You have a much more profitable business because one, they want to be there. You've hired the right people. So you know, they're giving excellent customer service. You've trained them properly. So you know, they're doing an excellent job with what it is that they do. At the end of the day, you end up with way more sales and way more profit in your business. And you end up with employees that are loyal to the business because you have made them part of the team and they don't feel as if it's just a job they're going to. Now, I understand that I don't understand people are different today than what they were before and blah, blah, blah. You're absolutely right. We have so many different generations that are in the workforce today and they all have different backgrounds from people that are the most loyal and they never want to leave their business to ones that leave at the drop of a hat. We have employees that can take the criticism and we have employees right now that can't take you saying boo to them without them running and saying, oh, you're being so unfair to me. I get it. You have to learn to adapt. You cannot expect your employees to adapt to you. You have to adapt your style to them and you have to know what it is that you're looking for. You need to be very clear when you're hiring what the job entails and what they can expect. The other thing is a big mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're hiring people is they look for themselves in the employee. Oh, I really like this person. They get razzled and dazzled by the answers. Listen, folks, a lot of people train on how to do interviews and they will say everything the right way. Think about it. Don't they know that they should say that customers are an amazing thing and they need to be taken care of? That doesn't mean they believe in it. Watch their mannerisms. Watch the way they're talking to you. Watch the way that they're looking at you. One of the signs that I caught really early on is if they won't look at me during the interview process, the odds are they weren't going to be looking at my customers as well. The reason is because if they, this is the most important thing they need to do, right? They need to get a job. So if they can't even look at you and engage with you during the interview process, I promise you they're not going to be able to do it with your customers when they get one-on-one -on -one with them. Now, I'm not knocking introverts. I'm one myself. Part of the challenge is if you're going to put somebody in front of people, they need to be able to handle that. Or they might be better off in a different type of job within your company. Doesn't make them a bad person. Doesn't make them a bad employee. It just means you need to put them in the right seat on the bus, as they say. Just like you would in any sport, you make sure that the player is playing the right position. Because if the player is not in the right position, they're never going to be as good as they could possibly be. 
most outfielders in a baseball game would make lousy shortstops. Shortstops have to move and go and run and jump, and most outfielders kind of stand out there for a long time. They can't just automatically switch over. It's just not that easy for them. And like I said in the episode yesterday, uh, in the course of Start a Small Business, I have a whole module on hiring employees and bringing employees aboard. So we go into a lot more depth about what to look for when you're hiring for people. I just want to kind of touch on some of the core things. So let's just say you go out there and you hire and you found the right person. You're just excited for them because you think they're going to add great value to your team. Well, the second part is you've got to make sure that you do your onboarding correctly and that you're training them on an ongoing basis. The last thing on earth that you need to do is throw them to the wolves. And for whatever reason, we think that's a badge of honor is to hire someone and let them try to figure it out. Well, guess who pays the price for that? The person who pays the price for that is you, the business owner, because if you just throw them out there, the odds of them staying are going to go down dramatically. Yes, the strong are going to survive and they're going to work their way up, but they're still going to be ticked off because they also want to come out to shoot being successful. You need to spend the time on training them on their job, what your expectations are, and understanding basically what your mission and vision is for your even your business. So you've got to make sure that transition into the business is clearly defined and they get the training and development to be successful. Then you've got the ongoing development because as they are, the longer they stay with you, the more they're going to take on. So you need to be able to continually train them on the additional responsibilities that you give them. And in some cases, you need to develop them. People want to stay. They need to have something that they're working towards for staying. And you should always be having in the back of your mind is who is somebody that can take over a lot of my duties down the road. That's how you're going to grow the business is you need to have a great right hand person. Because if you're going to create extra crews, you're going to split off into teams, you need someone that you can trust to be able to do that. So if you can identify them early and start giving them the training and development that they need, the more successful. I've watched way too many small business owners all of a sudden decide, hey, oh my God, my business is out of control. I need to have two crews or I need to have two teams. And yet I don't have anybody that could possibly do it. Well, yeah, because you never planned for it. You didn't think ahead of, I need to go out and find somebody or have somebody on my team that I can develop that can do that. You know, having employees is a full-time job itself. And it's one that drains a lot of people because not only are you having to deal with people who have personalities, who have good things happen in their life, bad things happen in their life, you know, they're going to be draining on you. And you need to make sure though, that you can not only handle that piece, but you also need to make sure that you are plotting out your business. You need to make sure that you're hiring before you need people. A mistake a lot of people make is that like business goes crazy. They're like, oh my God, I need to hire more people. And then they start scrambling, trying to find more people, but yet they can't find more people because they just don't have time to find new people because they're too busy doing all the jobs. And it's like, yeah, because you needed to suck it up, but cup and hire them two or three weeks early when you were slower so that way you could train them properly so that they would be ready when the time came. If you look at most big businesses, they hire people anywhere from two to four weeks before they need them so they can go through the onboarding process and get trained on the job that they're going to do. Not that they're going to come out the shoot being fantastic, but at least they're going to be prepared. But unfortunately, in most small businesses, because we run from fire to fire, we tend to bring people on and then just stick them next to us and say, okay, you're going to learn on the go. And then we wonder why they leave at the end of the day, end of the week, or within the next month. You really have to have a plan of how you're going to do this. As a matter of fact, as a small business becomes a big business and it starts to really have the light come on, on creating this big, massive company that whatever they want to create they have a light bulb moment where they realize that their employees are the key to being able to do that. Because in order for your business to grow, you have to have employees. It's a necessarily evil. Otherwise, you will cap out at how much work you personally can do until you can have employees. Like I said, I'm not going to spend tons of time and energy on this, but it is something to plant a seed in the back of your head that as you grow your business, that you are making sure that you start really diving into and understanding the art of having employees from finding the best ones to bringing them aboard. For those of you that have brick and mortar businesses that you're going to have to have employees from the get-go, please make sure that you start that hiring process before you need to bring them aboard. You need to find the right people. You may have to look at 100, 200 people before you find the best 
two or three that you plan to bring in your business. You need to find people that not only fit what you're trying to build, but you also need to find people that you think can help you take your business through that first year with excellent customer service, doing the job that you want to do, and hopefully possibly take on other roles within the business because you do not want to live in that brick and mortar every single day. You need to find somebody that can take on the role down the road of kind of taking over. So you want to make sure you spend that time finding the right person. So I'm going to wrap up this episode on employees and just know that these two episodes were really just to wet your whistle, let you know. But if you do want more information, get the Start a Small Business course. There is a whole module on employees. We go into it in much more depth. I think there's like eight or nine modules where we discuss employees and that's going to help you out big time. But otherwise, the biggest thing that I want you guys to do with your businesses is understanding employees, their impact on your business, their return on the investment. You need to get your money back out of them. They are a cost. You need to invest in them. Employees can really help you make a lot of money, but you got to do it the right way. You can't just expect to hire someone and start making lots of money. It doesn't work that way. They come at a cost and they come at a cost both financially and with your time. So make sure that you're prepared for both of those. All right, in our next episode, I'm gonna touch on franchises real quick. Uh, And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start wrapping this series up. I've been excited for you to join me and I can't wait to hear from you guys about some of these businesses that you're starting. So with that, bye for now and I'll talk to you on the next episode.